already. All right. Um, so, I'm gonna fire off an invite to me, or uh, before we play, let's go over the deck because it's really the fundamental aspect of the game. Okay. Let me open it up here. Already, I'm looking at it. All right. So. You've played a few skirmishes already, so you gather, I guess, probably which category does what. Yeah, I mean, I have now a pretty decent idea of, you know, the different uh, class, what would you call it, the classes, the yeah, specialty. Like roles, basically. Role, yeah. Um, and obviously the phases of when they become available and unit cost and all that. Cool. All right. So, yeah, so, I mean... Basically, uh, recon is your eyes, so like I t told you last night, you, you want as much recon as possible, typically, or at least enough to cover like your entire front line. If you got so gaps and recon... Should I just be... Should I just have Pathfinders peppered throughout the like whole swath of the map? Yeah, they're, they're good units. I can... Uh, once we get into the map, I can show you like the best way to spend your points once you get in game. But yeah, the okay. reason why you've got so many of them here is a they're really good recon. Um, so taking a step back, like the star is up top of veterancy, and two star is the best veterancy that a unit can have. So veterancy gives for infantry, it gives a lot. Actually, it gives. Um, higher rate of fire, higher accuracy, and a chance to dodge. Uh, most other unit types don't get the dodge bonus, but infantry does. Hmm. It's basically like they're better at taking cover. So Pathfinders, like I said, really experienced, but also if you click on them and you see their, uh, their, unit, their weapons on the right, the SMG that they have, the Thompson is really good at short range. Carbines, I don't know, I, I haven't used this division that often, so I think they're okay, but really what you want them for is the Thompsons. Like, at point blank range, they're, they're pretty decent. So do you generally, with your recon, unless necessary, you probably don't want them to engage, right? Yeah, so... You want them to observe. So, like, these guys specifically, again, good because of the Thompsons, and you'll see in the right that their range of the Thompson is 100 meters, which is extremely short. It's the shortest possible range increment for a weapon. So, uh, I can show you this in-game, but basically, there's a... There's a Am key, I late? Uh, a little bit, but if you want to join, Joey, we just got started. Let me right. let me send you the deck that I sent Eric, so we can just all go over it together. All right, I uh played through the like beginning missions or whatever, like little teaching ones or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Eric's played the tutorial and like it sounded like three or four skirmishes or something. So. Oh, nice. I think you guys are about at the same level of experience. Like I said, uh, skirmishes did not end well. The first one I got. Like, <laughs> yeah, a, now I've. Um, it took me a while to beat the AI in this game, and I don't know what difficulty you guys put it on, but medium AI in this game is. Oh yeah, I didn't actually beat the difficulty at all. Good. So. <laughs> yeah, the the AI the AI in this game is is pretty intelligent. I have to give them credit. Um, they they got do like an armored position on me but... that. <laughs> They just had this armor position in such a way that I just couldn't do anything about it effectively. It was just annihilating me. So, Joey, once you get in, go to the battle group, battle group screen, and there's a import button, and just paste in that text, and then you'll have the deck that Eric and I are going over, so we can all just be on the same page. All right. So Joey, um, how long have you played? You said just the tutorial so far. Um, I actually also played a skirmish. Okay. Um, so and I, I won that, but I put the 
AI to like very easy. Yeah. Because I didn't know how hard it was going to be. That was actually like what I was going to start you guys up with. I think after I go over the deck, probably I'll do it 2v2 against the AI, but I'll just observe and try to give you guys tips. And then okay. if that goes well, then we can 1v2. I can 1v2 you guys or something. But definitely best to start small and get the basics right because once you get the kind of like fundamental tactics figured out then you can apply them pretty much in any game type just gotta get the basics uh yeah so so recon your eyes without your eyes like i told you you can't shoot so pretty critical the other the other thing about experience eric is that um more experienced units have a spot bonus so they can for recon that's especially good they can spot stuff at longer range than less veteran units uh and infantry recon sees much better than vehicle recon so i gave you a m8 card because mm -hmm. there really wasn't much else in this category for this division gotcha. um but I wouldn't lean on them too heavily for like actual like, recon work. They're more there for their AT capability. So the top right icon, the yellow circle, is their uh, anti-tank gun's penetration value. Armor penetration. Yeah, and then the bottom right is Seven. their armor. So I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet, but you have to have an AT gun with a bigger penetration value than the armor value of the vehicle you're it attacking. Just bounces right off. Right. Um, so like if this vehicle were attacking itself, it would kill itself at any range. Um, so the tank destroyers you gave me, what is the highest uh, armor piercing value? I got some 13s. Yeah, I think I've seen 16. For this deck, it doesn't get much higher than 13. Oh. Hello, Nate. Hello? Joey, hello? Hello. Um, by the way, Joey, yeah. I'm recording this, so I'm gonna try to make a training video out of it for YouTube, because there aren't very many. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, uh, Nathan. Um... Oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, join me in your server, or your brother's. So, yeah, the the best AT that you're going to get with the 101st, I think, are the M10s. So they have veteran C also, you'll see. That's why they're in there. Um, like I said, veteran C affects accuracy, and tanks are basically hit or miss, so... The more accurate the tank is, the better, because uh, you get tanks without veterancy and they'll probably miss like three or four shots in a row, and they won't, I mean, that's as many shots as you're likely to ever get before you're taken out, so the more accurate your tank is, the better, so veteran tanks gotcha. are better than non-veteran. It's actually probably the most important category to have veterancy is tanks. Okay. Because um, so you're saying, generally speaking, your tanks will not last. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, I mean, a hit in this game generally is a kill outright. There's no, like, health, so to speak. You can damage tanks if you get a critical hit on them that wouldn't have normally penetrated. So it's actually a 2d6 die roll every time you attack. And if your die roll like doesn't meet the roll to beat its penetration value, the armor value, it can still like detrack a tank or like take out its transmission, which slows it down. If you get really lucky, you can uh, force the crew to bail out, which is effectively a kill, but the unit stays on the map and like it still draws fire, but it doesn't fire back. But uh, for the most part, a hit is either a bounce or just a kill. So you want to you want to hit often with AT weapons because you don't get many chances. So uh, yeah, 
you on accuracy for sure. So the M10s, like I said, that's what they're there for. They're your real AT capability, but they don't come along till C. You have some DDs in your tank tab and B. They're pretty nice. They just got to buff this patch. Um, it's a command tank in there. Uh, so command units is the star. Very important because they do two things. First of all, they give a free bonus star to every unit uh, within its command radius. So like if your pathfinders are within the radius of a command unit, it's three stars instead of two. Oh. So even better. Um, so all those bonuses are nice to have. But more importantly, command units prevent units from surrendering. So normally infantry, when they're fully suppressed, Pinned. yeah, yeah. It, if, if there are enemy infantry closing in on them, they'll just white flag, surrender. Uh, they will not do that if they have an officer nearby. So that that's pretty important. So you got a lot of command units in this deck. You got two leader cards in the infantry deck and a command tank card. Uh, I normally have at least two cards of leader cards in my decks uh, because they are just great for buffing units. And the, like I said, the surrender aspect is pretty important. So you you want to keep those out. Uh, obviously, uh, you don't get bonuses for multiple officers being nearby. So it's just like just start with up. one or two, yeah, and then have them near your battle group, so to speak, like your little uh, platoons. Um, don't invest too heavily in them, but definitely do invest in them. Uh, also, inf infantry tab, airborne engineers used to be probably the best short range fighters in the game because they had the flamethrower and three Thompsons and 11 men, which uh, infantry are kind of different from vehicles in that they will take damage over time. And they have basically the number of men in their squad is like their health bar, so uh, with an 11 man squad, they can take 11 hits. Um, they're still pretty good, uh, so you should probably open with those. If you're going after a city or a force especially, they're great there, and that's kind of what this division's all about. So, uh, bring them out early. The rifles are there, because uh, if you look at the top right, they have the anti-tank capability. That's pretty important, because if you don't have a T capability on infantry, a tank can just roll straight up to you, point blank range, and destroy you. Like, you have no recourse. There's no chip damage, so to speak. Like, no amount of rifles or submachine guns will ever destroy a tank in this game. So, you, if you don't have AT, you, you just cannot do anything against tanks. So, that's uh, good to have right. infantry with the AT capability because it keeps tanks at bay. Like, when they see that, they won't charge you. It's kind of a deterrent more than anything, but um, it's also great in cities because it basically keeps tanks out of cities. Um, so you'll see in the infantry tab you have a lot of rifles. Two of them have veterancy and two of them don't. Yep. And they all cost the same, so obviously start with the veterans. Uh, bring them out first. The other guys are just there in case you have a need for them, but uh, there is no penalty to bringing out veterans other than that you get fewer of them. So just bring them out okay. early. Uh, HMG is there for range. If you look at the range on it, it's 800 meters, which is the longest range infantry weapon. So when you've taken a town or a city, it's good to put those on the perimeter and like cover the open fields around. Uh, it'll Wait, basically sorry. lock Which down. Which ones did you say were at the longest range? The A Airborne M2HB heavy machine gun, third card from the end, I think it should be. Okay. Is there a secret to placing HMGs? Yeah, like... you want you want them to have long sight lines because of their range. So, like the outskirts of towns. Uh, especially adjacent to fields like that have no cover at all. Mm. They're great. Basically prevent infantry from crossing the fields entirely. Uh, 
that said, MGs aren't terribly important in this game. Like, I find they're better at suppressing than actually killing infantry, so uh, they're basically just there to stall charges until you get more troops in position. Engineers have TNT um, that does 20 HE damage, so uh, basically it will destroy a squad one hit, and there are, I guess, that particular squad only gets one charge, so uh, the thing to do with engineers is basically try to trade with more expensive squads, so like, engineers don't have any veteran C, they're just there to get that charge off and hopefully destroy like a really veteran elite squad, because um, otherwise they're not that great in a fight. But um, I wouldn't lean too heavily on them. The airborne engineers are probably straight better. Tanks, uh, like I said, the command command tank is there in case you need to make a push over open terrain, then you can put a command tank around your other tanks so that your other tanks don't uh, surrender, because tanks can surrender like infantry surrenders if they're under pressure and fully suppressed. Um, but you can't really keep command infantry out in the open with the other tanks, because they'll just get annihilated. You don't need much supply, that's why there's only one card in the support tab. Uh, this game only models ammunition. Uh, War game did fuel and ammunition, so supply was more important back then, but you don't have to worry about fuel in this. So. Probably we'll only really use supply for two things. It's anti-aircraft guns and artillery. Those both run out of ammunition pretty fast. Other than that, uh, it's pretty rare to run out of ammo on units. Maybe tanks sometimes if they live a long time, but normally they don't. So supply jeeps do I just park next to, like, my... Yeah, they've got a radius, so... It's like a little yellow circle around the unit once you... Once you stop it, it can't supply on the move, but once it, like, stops at a specific spot, then it gives supply to everything within, like, a, probably about 100 meters in every direction. Um, I can't remember if the jeeps can go into woods, though. Pretty sure that they can't. So they... Normally, like, you would have a, say, like, a anti-aircraft gun in a forest, and then you just park the supply jeep behind the forest. It's usually close enough to be able to supply the gun. Once it's actually supplying units, you'll see, like, a little blue icon, which shows ammunition being distributed. That's how you know it's actually working. Joey, are you getting all this? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, are you in the deck screen, the battle group screen? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, looking at what you guys are looking at. Okay. Following along. So you got that. You got that deck code working. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. So yeah. So AT. Pretty great in this game. Um. Because AT guns can be placed in forests, and tanks can't go into forests. So, they're great at, like, surprise attacks on tanks. Um, sometimes, if the tank that you're attacking doesn't have a recon around it, it would never even know that the gun is there, even after the tank is destroyed by the gun. They're pretty stealthy. Like, they're small. They're hard to spot. So, like, inside of woods, they get a cover bonus to concealment, so it's even harder to spot them. And... Uh, they got pretty decent guns on them. Like you see, they got 11 8 AT, so like they would destroy those M10s at least at any range. I can't remember if I mentioned how AT works though. So AT in this game, like I said, if it beats the armor, it'll penetrate and kill the tank. Um, but for every 100 meters closer the tank is, uh, you get a plus one to your AT. So like, that 11 AT value is at maximum range, so 1,000 meters. Um, so at 900 meters is 12, 800 meters is 13. So like, if, if there's a tank that has really heavy armor, and the Germans have a lot of tanks that have really heavy armor, um, 
it's usually beneficial to hold fire until they're like pretty close as long as they haven't spotted you and then fire because you get an AT penetration bonus and also an accuracy bonus so it's much better chance of an actual successful hit uh, AA it's kind of straightforward I think like you want it just basically slightly behind your front line uh, the Bofors is uh, deployed AA so it can be deployed in force like AT guns uh, the tracked AA is the vehicle, so it can't go into forests, but it has a ridiculously high rate of fire. It's um, basically going to shoot down pretty much anything that comes in range of it. Uh, this is like one of the most powerful AA pieces in the game. So You said you which one was that? The M16, the track, half-track AA. Um, what you kind of want to do with AA is have like two or three of them near each other so that like you just create an area that's basically completely denied to enemy aircraft. Um, yeah, once you've reached critical mass with AA, it's like impenetrable. So, especially since the most recent patch, they increased the amount of suppression that AA does to aircraft. Like it's really hard to fly over enemy anti-air. I get pretty frustrated by it because I love planes, but a lot of people don't. So. <laughs> the uh, scout planes, that can't be shot by AA, right? Any plane can be shot by AA. Um, oh, even the scout yeah. planes? Yeah. Scouts are actually probably the easiest thing to kill with AA because they are super, super slow. Yeah. But um, there are some fast recon planes in the DLC. Uh, yeah, they're also, AA is also great at anti-infantry work, because that's AHE damage, so HE is what you want for anti-infantry, AT is only really useful for vehicles. And so, 1610 rounds per minute of 16 HE at 800 meter range is pretty damn good against most infantry. It'll clear them out of buildings, uh, basically it's like you're... HMGs from the infantry tab on steroids that's way better at long range probably than the HMGs, which is why I kind of think HMGs aren't really that important. Land is armored, so the infantry probably don't have a chance to fire back at you realistically, unless you get super close to them and they can use their AT weapons if they even have them. If they don't, they're well, since it's open top, can't they throw a grenade in? Yeah, yeah, so... Good catch, Joey. Uh, every infantry squad has grenades. I think two each or something like that. So within, I think it's 50 meters, uh, any open top vehicle can be destroyed by infantry, even if it doesn't have anti-tank capability. So just be aware of that, I guess. Does it only take one grenade? Like... Uh, might be. Uh, I don't think it's like guaranteed to hit, though. I think it's uh, just a chance. Mm-hmm. I very rarely see it happen. Like, when it happens, I'm like, oh yeah, that can happen. It's that rare. Yeah. Um, so artillery, indirect fire, great if you just want to fire things without them being able to fire back at you, unless it's other artillery. So a lot of people like to play like that. Uh, it's not really what this deck is about. Uh, they're more in-your-face type of deck, but uh, they do have some decent mortars. The phase A mortar is only really there so that you have some kind of indirect fire capability in phase A. It's got a really short range if you see 900 meters. Um, most, most like, uh, I think most mortars and like anti aircraft guns and stuff in this game have a range like around 1,000 to 1,200 meters. So with a range of 900 meters, you have to get inside usually their their firing range to fire at them, which is never good. But since it's indirect fire, you can be like hiding behind a forest a tree line or something. And it doesn't do that much damage either. So I really I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even have those in a deck if I was making this deck for myself. But uh, I thought maybe you guys might want some indirect fire in A. In B, you get some better mortars, 1200 meter range, 
uh, decent HE. The other nice thing about mortars is their rate of fire, you see it's 10 rounds per minute. If you compare that to the howitzers to the right, that's 4 rounds per minute. So mortars fire a lot faster, they do slightly less HE damage than the howitzer does, but uh, they have a veterancy, so they get a bonus to their rate of fire on top of the rate of fire listed on the card, so they're, they're basically there just to put out shells as fast as possible. They're decent against infantry and buildings. It's like you can't dig some machine gun squad out of a building by attacking it directly. You can just keep mortar spamming it until they don't have a building anymore. Howitzers are there because they have long range, 2,000 meters. That's starting to approach what most normal infantry divisions get in terms of artillery, but airborne, again, they're built around point-blank range fighting, so there are artillery pieces out there that you will not be able to fire back at because they're even longer range. Um, that's just one of the drawbacks of using an airborne deck. But the AT that they have is like basically only there for emergencies. Definitely don't try to use that. I once thought that maybe you could effectively use howitzers as anti-tank guns on top of artillery, but they don't really work so well. And then the last two are naval barrage observers, which is probably going to be your bread and butter for artillery. It's extremely, extremely powerful. You get three shots with it. Uh, that's not three shells, but like three barrages. Um, the way it works is you have the spotter vehicle. So in this case, this like cheap looking thing, it has to be within a thousand meters of whatever you're trying to attack um, but once it's within range you just like uh, in your off map section in the bottom left corner of your screen you're gonna see like a little basically like a uh, crosshair type icon you click that and then you click the map and then like within 40 seconds the I guess this battleship whatever it's called just unloads on that particular grid point and since it's 356 millimeter, <laughs> 25 HE artillery, pretty much anything that's not armored will die uh, when it when it lands. It just takes like 40 seconds for it to land. Okay. Um, and you, like I said, you get three barrages, but that's only as long as the vehicle stays alive. So if the vehicle gets destroyed, you lose all your other barrages. So protect it until the third. The thing I like to do is like. Once I'm down to my last barrage, I'll just like charge the enemy with my spotter to get it as far back like as it possibly can. Because there's a lot of times when you can't like reach things without risking the vehicle because you have to get pretty close. Um, so I'll just like I'll tell it to move fast up a road and just wait until it's just about to get destroyed and then fire it as something like way behind the enemy lines. It's normally where their artillery and AA is. And then planes, uh, I guess really there's three basic types. We got recon, planes, the grasshoppers. I didn't give you guys any in this deck because they are very, very bad and they die very quickly. They don't really spot that much. Uh, they only really spot stuff that's in the open. Um, they're good if you want to spot stuff behind tree lines, like if the enemy is trying to build up tanks behind a tree line. They can help with that, but really, they're very weak and they're very slow. They get shot down by AA a lot, and even if they don't get shot down, down by AA, they'll get shot down by fighters 99% of the time. So, so I've what's like the P51 Mustang generally used for in the A phase? Uh, Mustangs are your fighters, so they're just there to counter other aircraft. Uh, okay. So if they have spotters or something, I can bring out the... Yeah, so like, your Mustangs can shoot down enemy scout planes if you see them. Um, whenever an enemy aircraft enters the map, you'll hear an air raid siren, as long as like some unit on your team can see it. So uh, the, the moment like your recon first sees a plane in the air, they'll sound the siren, and then that's when you want to bring your fighters out. They'll shoot down the enemy aircraft and then return to base. Um, Mustangs are pretty good fighters. They got way better recently. Uh, pretty good rate of fire. And 
fast. 700 kilometers per hour, I think, is the fastest plane in the game. So they're great for intercepting. So uh, if you have to scramble a fighter really quickly to take out some bomber that you just spotted, like when it's halfway across the map already, it's great for closing the distance really quickly and taking it out. Uh, Thunderbolts are AT rockets? Medium rockets, HE. Yeah. So there's two actually two different kinds of flavors of Thunderbolts in this deck that I give you. The first one is a rocket plane. The other three cards are all bombers. Um, you can tell by the icon on the top left if you haven't noticed. So make sure you check the icon before you choose which one to buy because they have kind of different roles. The rocket plane um, will be very accurate at taking out like one specific AT gun. Uh, they do HE damage, so they're not great against tanks, but they're pretty good against infantry and AT guns, stuff without armor. Uh, the bombers are less precise, but they do a huge blast radius, 63 meters, if you see on the bomb for the small bomb, and they have two heavy bombs with 80 meter blast radius. Uh, I think that's probably the best bomber playload for like a fighter bomber in the game. Um, 25 HE is really good. With a 25 HE bomb you can kind of drop it in the middle of two or three infantry squads and uh, either suppress all of them or even potentially outright destroy all of them like with one bomb. So they're, they're better against infantry than the rocket plane. The rocket plane is more kind of there for AT guns and like very specific targets. Mustangs, just more of them in C, I guess, than yeah, in A. I was kind of struggling with what to fill your air tab with. You get a lot of options with the 101st, and I don't really know American aircraft that much. I don't play these decks. The Marauder is a, another bomber. Um, slow as hell. <laughs> uh, 400 That's kilometers. That's better than the recon planes, so. though. Yeah, but um, it's a huge target. When it enters the map, you can be damn sure the enemy is going to scramble fighters to take it out because it's got four heavy bombs, so twice as many as the Thunderbolt had. Um, but yeah, it's hard to get it to the target because of its speed. Like it, it takes so long for it to reach target. So that's why there's only one card of them in here. But if it gets there, it drops four and it can like destroy an entire city block pretty much by itself, so uh, if there's like just completely exposed infantry with no AA around, it's great for destroying that. And that's pretty much it for the deck stuff. I guess the only other thing to go over is like the, the stuff actually inside of the unit pane, so um, most important thing is typically range and HE damage, or AT damage, depending on what the unit is. Uh, stealth is in there for ground units, and that counters the recon spotting, so like infantry are harder to spot than tanks. Um, strength for infantry is, like I said, it's like HP, so a squad of 12 guys is much better than a squad of 4 or 5, because it'll take many more hits to be destroyed. Uh, speed, obviously, is pretty important for a lot of stuff. The Kind of the one important thing about the unit stats, though, is that all of them are purely cosmetic. Um, they're kind of abstractions of the actual stats in the game. And these values are apparently like completely separate from the in-game damage and rate of fire values. It's just stuff that's there for kind of abstracting the way the unit works. So sometimes they aren't a perfect indication of how good a unit is, and you kind of have to try different units and see what really works best. You might be surprised. But, yeah, so unless you guys have questions at this point, I can start a game, probably. Let's say we jump in. Yeah.
Joey, do you not have a nickname? It shows like all question marks. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why he's, I wouldn't. He's blank for me. Yep, yeah, I'm I'm blank on mine too. Yeah, hey guys. Uh, apparently, people are watching my stream. Um, yeah, I've got shadows off because I'm playing at 4K, and it's about impossible to run the other way. What card do you have? It's a 980. Okay. Yeah, I have a 970. So. so it's got like four gigs of VRAM, and maxes out. Pretty cool. Um, Joey, uh, click your name and click switch team. No, we're gonna raffle stomp Joey. <laughs> yeah. That's how I learn best. Uh, <laughs> do you want to play with the French deck that you have, or do you want to play with the deck I sent? Um, I don't no, care. I... It's just easier for me to describe, like, or tell you guys what to do if I know what units you have. I don't know what the French have. Yeah, something. I'll go with the one you have. So we'll do two very easy AI. I will not it really. Should be manageable. I, I'm not going to spawn any units, but I'm just going to like place markers for you guys to show where you okay. should probably put your That's stuff. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, that'll be helpful. Just be like you know, place already here. Yeah, yeah. And since I'm actually on your team, I could do that. I couldn't do it third observer nights. So. Uh, okay. I don't think the map really matters. Let's set it to. All the default settings. Uh, the thing you should know before you get started is there is three game types now. It used to be two. Um, the second two are, or second and third are pretty much the same. But uh, the first one, destruction, I despise. It's all about <laughs> uh, every unit has a cost to bring into the field. You guys have seen that. So when it gets destroyed. Uh, the enemy team gets that many points. So like a 35-point um, infantry squad, if it gets destroyed, is 35 points to the enemy. So basically, it really sucks it's, when the it's bombers team shut match. down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unless the bomber destroys more than its cost, basically. That's true. It's, it's all about cost-effectiveness. And sadly, the most cost-effective units in the game are artillery, so that means that destruction normally devolves into one side just hanging back and artillery spamming the crap out of the other side and not really even contesting the territory, which is not that interesting to me, so I don't play it. Uh, taking these guys play Company of Heroes. Eric played it, at least. I don't know about Joey. I don't, I don't really enjoy Company of Heroes because of morale, but I have played it. I did not. I always really liked Company of Heroes. Yeah, Eric is a huge fan. I I played the first. I didn't even try the second because I didn't like the first. Uh, Conquest is uh, control territory. It's probably the game type you guys did in your skirmishes. So that's the one I play um, because it rewards attacking. And attacking is fun. Flanking and all that. So that's what I play. Closer Combat just came out this patch and it's Conquest, but it's it allows you to spawn your units further forward, and you can spawn infantry uh, without their vehicles that carry them normally. So, like, you can set up basically your defensive line before the map starts. Um, so, it makes slow units a lot more valuable that normally wouldn't be like up front and helping you out for a couple minutes into the round. Uh, they can be effective like straight away. So kind of changes what units are the most important. Okay. But Conquest, I think, is what most people play. It's the ranked game type. As far as I'm aware, there is no other way to gain rank outside from playing Conquest, so I'll just do Conquest. And Bois de Le Mans, uh, is a forest map, so it's actually good for the hunter first. I guess do that. And just launch.
So the thing to know about deployment is if you put stuff on the roads, uh, it saves a lot of time getting units up to the front. So in Conquest, that's pretty great, because if you get to the front first, then you get out to an early lead. So you want to put your stuff on the road, and you want to put it as far forward as possible on the road. So that means zoom in and place stuff like specifically on asphalt if you can. Uh, the other thing is this game is a lot like MOBAs in that you have lanes. So before the round starts, it's best to click the little keyboard icon in the bottom right. It's the F4 key if you want to use the keyboard. And then place a marker and claim which lane you're going to take. How do you place a marker? I see the keyboard thing, but... So, yeah, so those four icons, you got attack, defend, help, and keyboard is the fourth. Um, it doesn't actually have to be the keyboard icon, I just use it because I can put my name. But any of those, you click on any of those, then you click on the spot on the map, and you'll place a marker. And so that basically says, I'm taking this side, somebody else should go gotcha. to the other side. So it looks like Eric's going to take the left, so Joey, you want to take the right. Really, mm -hmm. Eric, though, I would recommend you guys swap because the 101st... Oh, you switched the 101st, Joey, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, 101st is a force fighting division, so they're great on the right here. They're not as great on the left. It's a lot more open ground. Um, so what to actually take... Uh, I should have really taken that 101st deck because I don't know what's actually in there. I think you probably want three... Three squads of the Pathfinders. Um, so like right, middle, and left for your lane to at least cover that entire front. Um, you guys don't have A-phase tanks, so you're going to need some kind of AT capability. Um, Joey, where you're going on the right, you're going to want a lot of infantry because it's short range, it's all forests. Eric, on the left, you can do some more vehicles because it's much longer range. Uh, both of you should bring at least probably two officers, one for like left and right side of your flanks. Mortars are great, so good call, Eric. And I'd say Joey did a much better job of placing his stuff forward, but he has a weird group on the right where it's far back for some reason. Uh, Eric, oh, you I can move those, <laughs> like the AT gun and the recon stuff that you have. You can move them like almost all the way up to the edge of the blue line, and it'll save you a few seconds, which is pretty critical at the start. So just, oh, you can't move them once you place them? Uh, you should be able to. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, you can just sort of you drag it. Yeah, drag. just drag it over. So you're saying just kind of move them to the edge? Just so like, here's the way I would open, look at your left. It would be like, I literally place, I zoom in as much as possible, and I place everything on the road. And it's like at the line, so that I get a few critical extra seconds at the start of the round. Um, yeah. The other, the other thing is, uh, you can give orders right now, so all your units should have orders to move fast to a specific position and unload. So I should reset my bindings. I think by default move fast is Q. You guys. Uh, I think it's F. F. Okay. Yeah, F is the default. So tell your units to move fast to like some tree line. Um, and then unload. So if you hold shift after you tell them to move fast and then hit the unload key, they'll tell them to do that in order. And again, that saves seconds at the start, which is pretty critical. If your guys are in trucks and you're like manually telling them to unload, it takes several seconds and they're liable to get shot before they can even get out to fire.
Okay. And if you're fully spent on deployment points, we can start. So this is a pretty common problem, but nobody took the actual middle. <laughs> I see that. Yeah, um, so it really only takes one unit to push the front line. So if the enemy has a single infantry squad, they can take a significant amount of territory if there's just nothing there to contest it. So you kind of want to have a pretty broad front. Doesn't necessarily have to be that deep. Uh, Eric, a good spot for your AT gun would be like there. Because um, it can see up the road to the right and kind of cover the left flank at the same time. And so your AA gun should probably be slightly behind your front. So like maybe in this forest. Yep. I'll get you possible. And you got two recon squads on the left, which I'll never complain about having excess recon, but you you wanna have it kind of spread out so that you're not wasting like gaps. Joey, your mortars are still in their jeep. For mortars and artillery, I usually keybind it with like the control one, control two groups so that I don't have to look and try to find them whenever I want to use it. Joe, you don't have to unload your infantry as far back as you did. You could probably move them like all the way up here before you had to. Yeah. But you're good. That's kind of what you want to do. Definitely keep your officer protected. Uh, if he dies, and any of those squads can surrender, but as long as he's alive, none of them will. I see you got the uh, deluxe edition. Very nice. These guys are getting shot. Um, when they're at full bar suppression like this, you want to retreat them immediately, unless they're inside of a building. Because they will not fire back while they're fully suppressed, so they're completely useless, and they'll take a lot more damage when they're suppressed too. When you retreat, they move at like double speed too, so it helps them get them out. You see those guys, Eric, they're pointing out. So, what the enemy has is a couple infantry guns in front of you, Eric. Okay. They are HE guns, so they're designed to kill infantry at long range. They don't have any AT capability, so if you have any armor, you can kind of push straight up against those and attack them directly without having to worry about it. Sorry, did I just freeze the game? I alt tab. Oh, that is uh, no. Good. Uh, I was just 
Nice. Not seeing anything moving. Uh, you want to constantly be attacking um, in Conquest, because right now uh, you guys are losing. You see the percentage map control on the minimap. Oh, yeah. So be aggressive. Try to take open space if you see it. Like, probably, Joey, you want to attack in this direction. Yeah. Uh, don't push that huge blob of entry on the right across the open, though, because those tanks will tear it to pieces. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm just moving them into the woods that are right here. So again, Eric, your infantry are pinned. Retreat them, or they will die. It's the hotkey for R. Uh, sure. Apparently, I again I changed my binds. I should probably just reset it. Yeah, so they'll move directly away from the front line, basically, and I'm pretty sure they get a movement speed bonus. So now they're not taking damage. They're recovering suppression. Live to fight another day. But, like I said, fully suppressed squads are effectively completely useless. They don't do any damage. They will not fire a weapon, so... Get them out. If Unless you have something you absolutely need to hold on to, like a critical building, you should always retreat. Them. Uh, you probably want recon on the left again. Eric, you don't have any right now. And Joey, don't put your leader out front on here. Oh, I was trying front. to get him into the yeah, woods. It's, it's good, to, good to cover. So, uh, cover, by the way, uh, if you mouse over woods or buildings, you'll see it's a green shield. That means that only infantry can go into it, or AT guns or AA guns, in the case of forest, at least. Uh, but there's also yellow cover, so like orchards, like near where Eric's officer is. Uh, tanks can go into that. So that gives tanks a concealment bonus. It's sometimes useful. Taken if your units retreat, they basically fall back like a hundred, maybe two hundred meters. But they're still in the fight. Um, they'll just try to break contact, and then uh, hopefully their suppression bar will drop over time because they're not taking damage anymore, and then they can attack again. It's not like a permanent retreat off the map or anything. Uh, yeah. It's got some Company of Heroes aspects to it. Uh, I think it's a lot more realistic. The line of sight and stuff is probably more realistic. At least the morale is more realistic than COH. But it's got a lot in common with it. World War II setting and the kind of battle group aspects. I guess Eric was telling me there was actually a Commando DLC. So they just did that for this game. Nice with the Pathfinder charge, Eric. Those guys are good at point blank, so if you can actually drive a vehicle straight up to infantry and unload them, they're sometimes pretty effective. Uh, another thing, yeah, so you notice your Pathfinders started firing as soon as they got out of the truck, but they were only using their rifles because they were at like 200 meters, and so their Thompsons were completely useless. Uh, this is kind of a more advanced thing, but there's a hold fire key. If you tell your like short range infantry like Pathfinders and Engineers to hold fire, they'll try to get as close as they can before the enemy starts firing on them and then fire back, which really helps with the short range. So. Pull your Pathfinders out though, they're about to get butchered. Or maybe they'll take out that infantry gun. 
you guys are pushing back now. You're down 1% of the map. Uh, if I were to make a suggestion, it would be a, Eric push a little bit harder on the left. But Joey, just keep pushing through the center of the woods until you make contact. You can probably just go completely around those tanks on the far right. They don't seem to be doing anything but just sitting there. And now it's back to even, but you guys have a deficit of 500 points, so you gotta attack some more. Doing a good job of keeping Lieutenant Winters alive. Ah, phase B. Excellent. Uh, Joey, mm. your a your rifles have the AT capability, so if you can get them close to those half tracks, they'll take them out. Yeah. You gotta get close. Short range, 200 meters. Away. Uh, those are artillery guns on the left, so if you push them with a tank, they'll probably just destroy them. If you guys have tanks by now. It's phase B, so I think you should have some tanks. So phase A is 10 minutes, phase B is 10 minutes, and then phase C is 20. Definitely don't roll those trucks directly into that infantry gun, though. Eric, they'll get destroyed with the troops inside of them, and that's a huge loss. Oh, it's phase B now? Yeah, it's two minutes into phase B. Nice. Yeah, there's some kind of sound effect that plays once the phase changes. I never noticed it. Yeah, I didn't hear it. I'll fly a recon plane over the left for you, Eric. Pay attention to what it spots when it goes overhead. That's the air raid siren I was talking about. That's because they just scrambled fighters for my recon plane. Which got destroyed. My poor recon plane. I'm scrambling some of mine. Yeah, they don't have any anti-aircraft because I flew straight over them for like two minutes straight, so we can try to catch up with them, but they're too fast apparently. They're gone. Uh, For aircraft, if they... Uh, you got the evacuation key figured out. If they don't have yeah. targets, get them off the map, because otherwise they'll just scramble fighters and probably shoot you in the back, because they can control when the fire door will enter, enter the map, and it'll probably enter the map when you're facing away from their spawn. So. Joey, stop your officer, he's about to die on the right. There you go. Got a tank now. So you guys are ahead, well not ahead, but you've got territory lead, so you should beat them if you just hold the ground you have now. can maybe move your AA and AT guns up, Eric, like here or so. Definitely still keep them behind your front line, but they're kind of too far back to do much.
Mustang going for that fighter. Yeah, there it goes. Should have him. The thing about Mustangs is that they have a huge turn radius, so they're fast, but like if you get into a turning fight with a Messerschmitt, usually you'll lose. So stuff like this AT gun is a pretty good target for either a bomber or mortars if they're in range. AT guns are pretty easy to destroy with high explosives. But even a fighter can do pretty decent damage strafing them if you want to try to strafe it. And yeah, they have no A. In this case, the pack at least has no anti infantry capability, so I could just charge it. So you can probably push up on the far right flank a bit. So one kind of nice, or maybe slightly cheesy thing about the front line is that it'll tell you where the enemy is not. Like uh, the fact that the allied front line pushed that far forward on the right means that there are no Axis units over there. Hmm. And two and a half minutes to phase C, but you guys are already closing in on complete map control. So now that you guys have 60%, you're getting plus two points per second. So basically, the more map control you have, the faster you win. Nate's um, converting everyone, huh? Uh, Joey Keep bought it, it was on volition. I didn't even try to convince him. Nate, you know the power you have over people. I do, Pugs, I do. I try to be responsible, though. He abuses the power. By the way, I'm recording this for YouTube for guides, so... You're on stream. Just, just so you know. Oh, then I'll it's probably... Bomb. It's I'll cool, probably you can hang out if you want. I don't, I don't, want. I don't want to ruin your tutorial. You can only possibly make it better. That I saw this game on your wish list disagree. at one point. You're just not interested. Uh, I'm just not good at real-time strategy games. But I'll teach you, man. I will teach you. And it's I watched it's not you a play lot it. like StarCraft or anything. It's lots well, I watched you play stuff. it one day, and I was like, nope, that's just that's yeah, a bridge too far for me. Pun intended. Yeah, well done. Uh. I don't know. I mean, it's a lot like D and D and Warhammer and stuff, where it's got line of sight and all that fun stuff. I think you grasp it pretty quickly. You play pen and paper stuff. And it's got actual dice rolls. You know, like really? Dice rolls, but that's the way attack. <laughs> that's what got him interested. The dice nah, roll. I just didn't know they would do that in a strategy yeah. game. Nah, it's like two d six every time you roll to attack. Um, about that, guys. If uh, if you select a unit and like try to target an enemy, you'll see when you mouse over it that 
it shows chance to hit and chance to penetrate both. Um, so, like if you have an AT gun with a thousand meter range, but it only has nine armor penetration, and the tank you're attacking has 12 armor, it might be like 70% chance to hit, but 0% chance to penetrate. So you gotta pay attention to both. And Eric, you have a gap forming in your line to the right. So defend yep. this little pocket. Yeah, the AI is not perfect. It'll fire when it can, not necessarily when it can penetrate, but just whenever it can attack something. So it'll give away its position sometimes when it can't do damage. That Pathfinder squad's way forward. <laughs> it's doing a great job, though. I guess that's what's what they do. For, yeah. And that's an AT gun that just got dropped off in front of your Sherman. So. Oh. It's falling back though. It's suppressed. So, if you're playing against a human, you'd probably want recon like here and here because your tank could get shot from the side pretty easily and you'd never know. Joey's poor officer. So Joey, that rifle squad, like right there, can probably move up and take out the tanks in the forest right in front of it. But don't try to use the flamethrowers, they don't do anything to tanks. Just the, yeah. just the rifles. And Eric, this jeep has a mortar squad in it, and it's liable to just get shot and destroy the squad with it. Oh, hello. Hey, Ben. Hello. Just FYI, I'm recording some stuff for YouTube. I've got voice on. Roger that. I'm seeing two different games here. So you guys should... No, that's how good I am at Steel Division. I'm playing it and Rainbow Six. Joey, move these guys and attack this tank with the rifles. It's a very heavy tank, but you're at point blank range, so you should be able to destroy it with the AT guns those guys have. And that was like 200 points you just destroyed. So, nice. Calling in a uh, airstrike on the tank. Well, it's leaving now, so. So, there's a good example of why you need a recon. Your plane can't really target it because it doesn't know where it's oh. at now. And they have any air in the town. Yeah, but it's just one. Oh, the fighters might destroy that marauder. Though. Yeah, it wasn't really a threat. That's why the Marauder is so slow, it can't even escape. Um, that's why I only give you one card in that deck. It's really hard to use. Mm -hmm. It's a very high risk, high reward thing. Uh, good armor charge on the right, Joey, but you want recon in front of it, because they could get yeah. 
taken out by infantry like you took out the one. Again, just just keep spawning recon as much as you can until you run out. Make sure your whole front line is covered, otherwise you're blind. It's probably the number one tip I could give any person just starting the game. And Eric, uh, try to compress this pocket because that's probably empty space and it's just like free territory for them. The front line will grow as long as there's nothing there to stop it from growing and there's just no allied units around. So if you yeah, just sure. put something there, it'll block it. So you guys should win in about three or four minutes. Eight minutes here. Good kill on the recon. Half track or whatever it was. So don't push this tank like right up against that tree line because it'll probably get taken out by those Panzer Grenadiers. Mm -hmm. But it's really good where it's at right now because it's got some distance between the infantry and it, and the infantry is not in range to AT it. So. You want to keep tanks at range from their targets, so you want to close the distance of the infantry basically. Oh, one other thing, Eric. Sorry, the recon units don't affect the front line, which is I, I did I knew that one. Okay, it's nice because you can sneak recon through the front line behind enemy lines, but at the same time, if you need to collapse the line, then it's not good to send recon. Definitely retreat those guys. Um, in general, Axis Infantry has an advantage at long range. They have MG42s. Most squads do in Lima. Allies are really good at short range, so you probably want to try to like drive right up to them and unload as close as possible without getting shot. Otherwise, just try not to cross open ground. Yeah, it's a good time for some fighters. Three on two. Um, when aircraft take damage, it takes them longer to respawn. So even if they don't die, they suffer a respawn penalty. You know? Again, Eric, open ground, not good for infantry. These guys fall back. I would try to go around the left flank and stay in the woods if you're going to try to attack them.
basically infantry should move from cover to cover. So like you would want to go like here to here and then like up this way. But try to stay in green cover as much as possible. Two minutes to major victory. Let's see how this works out. Uh, before this map ends, um, if I were you, Eric, I would have AA like here and here. So, like, you typically want AA just behind your front line, but you need it, otherwise, aircraft are gonna ruin your day. Joey, if I were you, I'd have AA here. And here, and maybe here. So, Marauders are HE bombers, they're not going to destroy that Panzer, probably. Oh! But. Oh, these were the ones that were the that AP. said, when a tank takes full suppression and is falling back like that Panzer is right now, you can land bombs on it and make it just surrender from panic. Oh, okay. But it, it basically requires like a two aircraft strike, like the first one panics it and the second one uh, makes him surrender. All right. It's pretty much down to chance, though. You want to use... Uh, the rocket planes probably for that purpose because mm -hmm. they're more accurate. There we go. And then before you guys click exit, uh, it's always good to go to the kills and losses tab and figure out which units you got a lot of kills with and try to keep using them the same way. And figure out which units took a lot of losses from and try to figure out why and how to avoid that. My Pathfinders took out a decent amount of stuff. It also and really losses. helps to watch replays uh, for this purpose once you're first starting out. One of their IG-18s are those infantry guns. Mortar? The, okay. No, they're direct fire. Um, they're like AT guns, but for infantry. I took the most damage from those yeah, easily. Like three or four of those. Shredded Pathfinders, Riflemen, <laughs> probably Nears. That's normally down to trying to cross open ground, because IGs are like long range anti infantry. Goddamn. So. 2v1 or not? Wait, against you? Yeah, you want to try it? <laughs> yes. I don't want to hear oh, this. Yes. I want to hear the tears. Yeah, I'm here to turn <laughs> for that. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I mean, it's going to be hard. Like you guys see, it's a, it's a game of territory control. So if you constantly push me, it's, I'm going to be very strung out. It's going to be hard. So. Just be Damn. aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Alright. And I'll use my best division, sorry. Because you guys are playing allies. Yeah. Oh shoot, I've made this a public game. Like, not a public game. YouTube playing Rainbow? I'm just playing by myself. Yep. 
hell's Ben doing then? I don't know, looking at porn. He likes to talk about it. This is true. I like how the invite thing slowly creeps up. <laughs> it's just like, hey. So feel free to play your French deck if you want, Joey. I don't care at this point. I don't know anything about them, but I think they're supposed to be good at cities. I haven't played them. And making crepes. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> it's like we. <laughs> Chat is telling me no mercy, guys. Sorry. That's that's fine. Is Chet just Ben? Uh, no, it's some guy named Wubbits. Hi, Wubbits. Great name. Wait, are you actually broadcasting? Yeah, I know. I'm streaming, and I'm going to record this for a like a guide, because there are no good guides for Steel Division, unfortunately. We're, I didn't we're... know you ever did uh, voice. I'm just doing it for this, because I'm giving explanations as I go. So. Me and Joey are unstoppable. 30 <laughs> minutes later, oh god. <laughs> 30 All minutes right. later, I quit war forever. <laughs> so... Since Joey is not playing 101st, I would strongly recommend that Eric takes the forest side of the map because that's where he's best. Yeah. And so I take the left. Yep, yep. They say oh. it's. Oh, that's Pogues. <laughs> it's not a that's... victory if one of you doesn't cry, according to Pogues. <laughs> Who's this Pogues fellow? He sounds like a smart man. I, know, but I think his... you should perma ban them from your stream. It's definitely it's Pogues. So... It's got it's in the name. Uh, All right, so I guess I'm on the left oh, now. Oh, cool! I get twice the points because I'm. Wait, wouldn't you be on the right this time? Or... Well, look, look at the map. It's for heavily forested on the left. Oh, I think okay. it it flipped. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Pretty sure we're on the opposite side of the map this time. All right. And if you can, give me a minute, because it takes me a long time to deploy for two. It's going to destroy us, Joey. <laughs> I know. It's going to be stressful for me, regardless, because there's just so much to cover. Like, I'm so used to just covering the left flank on this map. But... What he's trying to say is that when you guys lose, it's going to be embarrassing for you. Yeah. Feel, feel real bad about yourselves, please. Well, not a problem. Is that... Part of your beginner's guide? Yeah, first first rule. Dear feel beginners, real bad about your Give up. Just don't. So, does just one of us have to click launch battle, and then it's yeah? Starts, but like I said, it? please wait. I'm like oh, yeah, I would... deployment because I've got so much to do. So, question: Does that how that works in multiplayer? Then is it sort of rush to place your things and click launch? Uh, kind of. For small games, yes. Ten v ten, it just has a set three minute deployment phase, so you have to get done three minutes. I have no idea what to do. All right, this is good. All right, Joey, you drive in the town and sell him your poison crepes. <laughs> he won't oh, be able yeah. to resist them. Everybody does love crepes. Except for when you say it, creps instead of creeps. <laughs> I know. Creeps. Quip. Oh, Flash <laughs> Meggers. Yeah, I guess I could. They're called the Space Marines on Reddit because they're super fucking good at long range. Wow, this game doesn't sound historically accurate. Oh, yeah, I have. I took the chainsaw swords. Ah, 
It just came with my mechas. I'm downloading this. Seriously, Ben? No. No. Oh. <laughs> he feels really bad about saying that. I was excited I am, for I am intrigued having watched this stream so far. Uh, definitely, it's not a conventional RTS. I think it almost falls into its own kind of genre here. You well, you said this. You called it a grand RTS, or uh, I call it real time tactics because it's not real time tactics. like base building at all. It's just all about the tactics. All right, I'm ready. If you guys are ready enough, not at all. I canceled then. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it still counting down? <laughs> Because there is no stop, stopping Nate's uh, total still, victory. It's still counting down. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I hit yeah. cancel. Apparently, that doesn't matter. Oh, oh, I was. Uh, I was uh, yeah. If somebody else started it, it you can't cancel their count. Oh. Whoever okay. is ready first starts the timer, and then everybody else what better be ready. Cancel? Or you're taking too long, I guess. Sure, nothing bad will happen to us, Joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not too sure about that. So you're a mechanized division? Um, I'm a. Uh, so I was yeah. like, okay, I'll 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 see how this goes. So I named it. I named my uh thing Blitzkrieg, and uh -huh. it's a lot of real fast, get all up in your face kind of stuff. I apologize in advance, Jay. So this is an AT plane. No, no, no. On them crossroads, I see. You see nothing. Oh, I feel like I'm not going to be of most, much use. So, do you notice how my AA guns are good at anti-infantry work? Or... Oh, nice with the flamethrower. It's a kind of a nice secondary benefit of AA is they can double as like heavy machine guns.
Get out of the skies. Leave. Be gone. You have deterred me. But is it enough? For now. Uh, Mustangs. Yeah, easy mortars are good. Uh, you're gonna lose that turning battle with the measure sweat, though. What do I do about that? <laughs> Evac. Or try to get back to your friendly airspace if you can, but in that situation, that'd be better. So, speed isn't great at turning. Makes you overshoot. Good over there, Joey. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Died, something was died. Three minutes till phase B. I have Dick Winters on my team, Ben. Oh, perfect. I thought you would uh, appreciate that. Sure do. What was Joe Toy? Give me the. Joe you Toy. are a terrible person, Nate. Yeah, invest heavily in AA. I'm just trying to teach you a lesson. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nate uh, specializes in hard lessons. Eric, that was giving me a bit of a scare. I need to focus more on that flank. Oh, shit. So if those guys don't have officers, they're going to surrender in about two seconds. Uh, Dick Winters won't let that happen. Uh, he otherwise, he's going to die. Happen.
Oh shit! <laughs> was not expecting flamethrowers there. <laughs> <laughs> Sauerkraut, extra crispy. I like it. You stole my supply truck. It's my supply truck. Sauerkraut is <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It was here this entire time. You built this? I built this. Sauerkraut isn't known for being crispy. Mm. If you do it right, it is. Okay. Doing good work with the martyrs, man. That's like probably my biggest weak point, honestly, is artillery. If you can get good at that, it's super effective. But definitely displace after you fire, because then I'll just drop bombs. He seems to be winning. We should, uh, we're losing that, uh, right flank. Yeah. These guys moving right, uh, through it. He sure does. Hmm. Gotta say, I didn't expect that. <laughs> what? Uh, having so many planes that you could overwhelm my AA. Yeah, that's really the most effective way to use planes. But if you are diligent about keeping your AA net up and spending a lot of points on it, it's normally impenetrable. One gun at a time, though, isn't going to cut it. I'm uh I'm losing the left flank here. Oh yeah, and Lipton and Malarkey are on my team too, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Tiny, I have Joe Toy. Oh shit. <laughs> totally didn't notice that. Play. Mustang. Take care of. Dead. Should be dead. Mustang should pay the price then. Hmm. No. Ah, the famous war tactic of no, cut it out. <laughs> Stop. If you would just stop it for a second, you would notice that that's really mean what you're doing.
I'm about to lose that town. Oh well. Everything is surrendering. rifles. Teach him a valuable lesson about flying in our skies. Who's skies? Who's skies? Um, you don't poke the sleeping bear, <laughs> man. Tell him I have an apology coming his way. <laughs> we don't fly in your skies. I'm so terribly sorry. Pardon me. Won't happen again, sir. Okay, yeah, things are going poorly on the left here. He seems to have a lot of points. Is that a problem? Well, he's like flying them like a combat way, right? No. Well, yes. Oh, yeah, that is a problem. Do you have any of those plain no-no guns? What are they called? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I like have a... a couple. Yep. I have a couple. Not as many as I would like. Yeah, sorry. I took a deck with a lot of planes, and I get double the planes because it's two on one, so this is kind of spammy. But uh, in multiplayer, it can end up this way if somebody basically like decides to just dedicate themselves to dominating the air and let the rest of their team handle the ground. It's not that uncommon. I have so much. AA and it's still not doing anything to him. Well, the fact that it's suppressed means normally it won't get its bombs off before it turns around. Man, phase C cannot come soon enough. Uh, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm really weak in the center right now, where that huge, like, spearhead that you guys have is at, obviously. If you push we knew that already. there, that's probably the best way to go. What do you think we've been doing this entire time? <laughs> well, those guys in that town have been sitting still, so that's what I was Probably a good war hint. That was Hitler's downfall. Was he, uh, he's like, let me give you a hint. Um, Please don't take these beaches. Dear Russia, don't engage me on multiple fronts. Why is our Hitler gay? <laughs> like, he has like a really effeminate German voice. Why is it? Let's just steal some of the power from him. Yeah. Did, did you see our two units annihilate each other? Mm-hmm. Guys, that's not... Good. 
It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't celebrate that. <laughs> They're all dead. Isn't that great? So funny. I'm like, why is that funny? <laughs> You're a weird general. What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> How did you get this job? Pure nepotism. Wow. Wow. Rude. What do you know? Rude, sir. Gay Hitler. That's what His brother is Hitler's barber. He only gets the one haircut. How hard can it be? It feels like we're not losing as hard as we are. <laughs> I know, right? It's the calm before the storm. Yeah. That's also what Hitler said uh, about Russia. <laughs> it feels like we're not losing that poorly. How's Stalingrad going? Because I got to tell you guys, it doesn't feel like we're losing. They've encircled our whole army. Yeah, but the feels. <laughs> all about the feels. So let's push the advantage or what other bullshit sayings like that. Fortune favors the bold. Yeah, all that good shit. Now Nate's just thinking, man, I gotta cut a lot of Hitler stuff out of this video. <laughs> no, I don't. Or he's thinking, <laughs> I wish there had been more Hitler stuff. <laughs> it would have been really on brand. Yeah. Yeah, get that shit out of here, Nate. You still dropped a bomb, huh? Yeah, I, I don't think that I hit anything. I'm kind <laughs> of just dropping bombs where I think you might be at this point, because I have so many bombs. <laughs> just so many bombs. You wouldn't believe the amount of bombs I have. When your entire army becomes anti-air. Oh, uh, by the way, in order to do that, there's like a fire, I think it's T, like fire at the ground key. It's, yeah, it's you can planes. target an area. Yeah. How so is like, that plane not exploded? That's what I'm saying. He must have downloaded the hacks. <laughs> Did that hey, guy say hey, his call sign was, was War Daddy? I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish he wouldn't would call himself that. I kind of want to let Nate take more take more area so he gains more points faster. So our defeat doesn't seem super drawn out. I'm trying. Also, one of Hitler's strategies. Well, he's, he's, he's like, still just playing. Get shit over with. <laughs> this sucks. Oh my gosh, Nate, you're playing. I fought Russia Ow. in the winter. This sucks. I hate it. God, I hate it so much. <laughs> this map's bullshit. <laughs> Just driving those half tracks right by my infantry. I ain't scared. Apparently not. <laughs> too fast, too pure. Can't <laughs> I have an idea. Oh, by thing? the way, if you guys don't know, the airborne decks are basically immune to the normal morale penalty that you'd get for fighting behind enemy lines. So, yeah, idiot. this is good. No, this is good. There. Sure, I hope nothing bad up. happens. Well, about that. He's like, <laughs> well. oh, such bad news for you. No, stop it. There's no need for that. Oh, they got a lot of fighters. So, um, did my bombs hit anything? <laughs> uh, go fish. <laughs> hmm. Joey, our goal was not to win any longer. It's just to get more than 36 points. Ooh, that, 
but that might be kind of hard to do. But set your sights a little lower. <laughs> Try to see if one of your loot, one of your units, can run away. <laughs> Send them all off the battlefield. <laughs> if at least one of them can survive to fight another day. Yeah, see if one I of think. them can be routed. Your unit has quit war. Victory through cowardice. The only victory I know. Yeah, get his get his stupid plane out of here. I've lost a lot of planes. Why are they pinned down? Why are pioneers so good at pinning down engineers? Because of the covered wagons. Oh. <laughs> This top level joke brought to you by Pogues. Hmm. Can't say I'm a fan. So you have one guy with a fucking Panzerfaust out there just being a dick? More than one. Oh. <laughs> ah, see, it was a trick. Now he's exposed his true positions everywhere. Yeah. Looks like a lava lamp now. Surrender rifles, you can't do any more good here. Pretty big pocket, then. Not going super well. I don't know what charm was. This is clearly very, very effective. Is it, though? Do you see all the red, don't you? That's bad. So that meant good. So we were winning for once. Oh. See, there you go, Joey. Those, not, not one of those planes dropped a bomb. Cool. That's what you need to do. And they will never drop a bomb. Good lord. Because they are bad. Go away. That's how you use it, yeah. I mean, like, most of my units now... Or just AA. Well, it doesn't have to be that much, but it's got to be at least probably. Your planes will planes. not do anything to me. You will leave my planes alone or my ground things alone. Stop it. Just get some help. Yeah. <laughs> All right now, here's the part where we come back because we're real good at the game. Sounds about right. I think he could be right. No, why? Why are you in the woods? It's very beautiful. Seashun. Oh, that's that's pretty weak sauce, man. <laughs> he can't possibly win now. Stop my tank push, Joey. Nope.
How could you? That was my favorite vehicle. Someone needs to tell that soldier about phrasing. He said we're ready to pound them, sir. Nope, sounds good to me. Checks out. Oh, that's blue on blue, you idiot. <laughs> Cease fire, jackass. <laughs> He know what he he knew what he was doing. Mercy killing his own men. Uh, There's just a couple asshole Germans yeah. in these woods. Two tank pushes stuff. Stop! Stop being everywhere. <laughs> He is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Well, I'm out of ammo if that's a tank you're talking about by the woods. So just... Kill him, tank. Shoot into the woods. <laughs> can't Destroy him. It's forbidden. This is forbidden. There he is. Shoot him. Shoot him with your guns. Oh, Joey, did you notice your OP M4A2 is an artillery observer, as well as a tank? Hmm. Oh, yeah. So you should have a artillery thing in the bottom left off map section. Oh, no, oh, not anymore. Yeah, I did. I was about to click it, and then he died. Kind of sad. This can't be good. Oh no. It could be though? Maybe? That's not what I meant to do. Uh oh dear. <laughs> Sorry. That was that was bad. <laughs> that, was, that was real bad. Yeah, so I can keep playing against the AI with you guys if you're up for that, but it's gonna take some time. Looks like one of your Fulshamjager groups took out six squads. A lot of a lot of people. Yeah. Space Marines. And one of them was Dick Winners, you monster. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you did good mortar work on the forest side, Eric. And uh, Joey, you were doing good with the AA at the end. Also, you did a good job of stopping oh, my I tank did. pushes, but um, try to be more aggressive. Like, you left your tanks just sitting still for a very long time. They could have probably did some damage in the center. Uh-huh, yeah. If I just rolled them right up into your... Well, I had, like, <laughs> two recon squads and a command squad there for the longest time, and that was it. And... Were uh, you two wanting to play Rainbow? What do you have a full squad? 